Hey there guys, I'm Will and welcome to FP1. Now today, the FIA have announced their almost finalised blueprint of the 2021 regulations and we've finally got to see a car as well that looks maybe a bit more what we sort of expected it to look like and if you can't tell, I'm pretty excited by it. So I thought I'd take today then to talk about what's changed from what we knew already uh, and then go over some of the new other regulations that we've had in the last couple of hours because there's quite a few juicy things to talk about. So let's start then by talking about the front wing. Now immediately if we go and compare it back to the wind tunnel model that we saw back about a month or so ago, lots have changed. To start with, let's look at the actual elements themselves. They're a lot more curved now, the geometry's changed quite a lot. Back before, they were more sort of like straight lines, and now they've got a bit more curvature to them, which is cool, which is quite nice. I think it's quite aesthetically pleasing as well. Uh, the big change, though, is obviously the end plates. They're no longer sort of rectangular pylons, similar to what we have at the moment. They've now been turned to this almost this aeroplane wing sort of shape. I think they did talk about this about a month or so ago. There was this article that came out saying they were considering it, but we didn't get any photographs. So this is the first time we've really got to have a look at something like this. And I'm very, very happy that it's not just simple anymore. I think the last front wing was quite simple. It was just a few wings and a bit of and a blocky uh, end plate at the end here. And if you have a look on the um on the outside edge of that uh, of that end plate you have got a bit of a curve just to sort of bring that air up closer over the tire. And yeah, it's not just a bit dull like it was in the previous model. It's looking a lot more um a lot more stylized and I, I quite like the look of it. I think this is probably one of the areas which the teams will be allowed to change. Uh, obviously the regulations are going to get a little bit more condensed, a little bit tighter together so that teams won't be able to deviate so much from what we can see at the moment. But I think this is one area which I think the teams could definitely manipulate and uh, have a few different uh, interpretations of. So the whole point of this curved end plate then is basically to stop or at least prevents the uh, a, a vortex generating at the trailing edge of the uh, of the wing. Works exactly how it does in an aeroplane, actually. So taking that air uh, and instead of it, it's just stopping at a point and creating this awful turbulent vortex, which is going to create a load of dirty air. It's shifting that up. It's moving it out of the way and means it doesn't really get. Uh, it doesn't really interfere with any parts further back on the car, which is really good for us. It means we can get faster cars and it looks quite aesthetically pleasing as well. So I'm not going to complain. Um, talking of the aesthetics, the nose cone, no more thumb noses, or at least I hope this is what this means. Um, I love the look of this nose cone, which just sort of comes to a nice round point, a bit like the Mercedes one. Uh, every other team on the grid, I've never really liked this thumb nose, which we've sort of been seeing since about 2015 onwards. So um, quite nice to see that as well. Uh, cut, uh, just a nice sort of round nose cone coming back into the sport. Uh, it's Again, I don't think it's an area which I think teams will be able to manipulate much. I've got a feeling that's going to be very, very tight. Um, maybe they might be able to change some of the uh, aerofoil placements on the nose cone, but the uh, actual nose cone itself and the shape and the geometry of that, I think will pretty much be constant throughout the majority of the grid. Moving slightly further back, then we do have a bit of more of a simple suspension, which again is just to stop some of that uh, dirty air getting out and affecting the cars behind. Uh, again, we can talk about this little winglet that's coming over the top of the wheel. It got confirmed in the Formula 1 video today uh, that it is what I thought it was, which is basically it stops uh, the the dirty air and the wake coming off the uh, of the tyre. Obviously, when this tyre is spinning, when the air hits it, it's going to create quite a lot of turbulent vortexes. So the whole, the whole point, really, of this wing uh, is to sort of condense that flow and smoothing it out a little bit as it moves further back on the car and that again just stops it interfere it stops it yeah it stops it interfering with uh, things like the rear wing or cars behind as well more importantly um uh, the other thing to talk about with sort of that front end i think is the wheel covers as well and it happens on the back uh obviously we've got these wheel covers i'm not quite sure what they've done i think they've tried to create like a graphic to show the actual tire and the wheel behind it but I don't quite like that. I think the idea that they initially had was to show things like car positions, sort of like they do on IndyCar, uh, or at least they used to do on IndyCar with the uh, just above the engine box they had the little LED display, which t which told you um, what position the car was in, or even in uh, the old uh, GP3 series where it would tell you how many DRS uses the drivers had left. Um, but you know, I think if they manipulate those co wheel covers correctly, it's going to be really really exciting and really useful for the fans as well. Just don't quite like what they've done with them here. So hopefully we can have a little bit of change on that. Or hopefully teams will be able to put their own spin on that with the car liveries as well. Moving slightly further back, let's talk about the Halo. Not really much changing from the old model we've seen. It looks a bit more aggressive this year. I think the livery of the car's almost deliberately been um, designed to make the Halo look a lot more inclusive. And not make it sort of jut out like it sort of does in the current generation of cars. Um, I am I mean, we've, we've all got to accept the Halo now. I'm quite happy with the way it looks. I think... The way that we got back in Singapore last year when we first saw the template of these cars, it did look a little bit weird with this sort of dip in the middle. And I sort of liked it initially and then slowly sort of fell away from it. But I'm I'm, I'm loving this current design. It's 
for something that we're going to have to stick with, I think it's the best option, really. Uh, obviously, you've got the aero screen coming in IndyCar. Maybe, well, maybe in a few years' time, we might start seeing that being incorporated into Formula 1. But, you know, it's... I'm happy with what we have here, basically. Uh, now, the actual underfloor on the side pods hasn't really changed much from what we saw uh, back in that first sort of wind tunnel model. So, obviously, a lot more aggressive, a lot smaller as well. So, I do wonder, again, if cooling could be an issue, obviously, keeping the uh, power units we're using at the moment. Uh, and they are talking about a possible freeze of the power units in 2021. We'll see if that goes through or not. Kind of have a feeling Honda, Honda and Renault might disagree a little bit. But... Um, yeah, it's, um, it's it's obviously looking a lot more aggressive, looks a lot nicer as well to look at. No more fiddly barge boards and loads of winglets and stuff, which it might be a little bit sad to see that go, but if it improves the racing, I'm all for that. Uh, moving underneath the car, you've got these tunnels as well, which is going to help with the whole ground effect sort of drive this car has. Um, and again, creating a lot of underfloor downforce, which isn't going to produce that dirty air that the current cars do. So that's really exciting as well. Uh, no skirts on this car, which I think a few people were thinking about. Um, I'm wondering if we could see... But I think having skirts on the uh, on, on, on the sides of the floor is just maybe a bit of a danger concern because obviously it will give you loads and loads of downforce. But if that downforce is broken, all of a sudden you have you've gone from having loads of downforce to none at all, and that's really when we can start seeing quite serious accidents. So I think it's fair enough we haven't got skirts. The idea with the Venturi tunnels underneath the car. Um, I'm loving it. So, yeah, hopefully that can stick through. I think it will stick through. Um, so moving to the rear of the car, and this is where lots of things have changed and not many people have noticed this. So the old rear wing, um, well, I said the old rear wing, the rear wing that we saw in that first sort of wind tunnel model that I did the video on wasn't quite as angled at this, especially with the end plates. Uh, I think these pictures clearly show that we're not going to get DRS back as well. Uh, as that sort of, in fact, both end plates are almost moulded in, oh, sorry, both... Um, wings have molded in with the end plates so a very very interesting thing there and I, I do think it'll be interesting to see whether uh teams will be able to adjust that over the course of a race race weekend and how this affects setup of the car as well will we need separate rear wings to go on the car now talking about the rear wing and sort of maybe taking one off and putting one back on again it might have become a little bit easier if we look at the way the uh, the rear wings been attached to the car. Uh, so they're two sort of struts quite next to each other. I'll um, point them out and zoom in on the video. Uh, they're called swan necks. So what they are is, well, the name is obviously because they look a bit like the neck of a swan and the head as it bends down. Uh, it will connect to the chassis and basically just, well, connects onto the top of the rear wing. Very, very efficient way of getting them on. Very, very secure as well. Um, we haven't seen that as much this year. They've been a bit more concealed. So in in the recent in decades or so, so uh, it's it's nice to see them and it's it's cool to see. I, th I th well I think again this could be an area where I think teams can maybe manipulate the rules and change things up a little bit. So um, that'll be interesting to see how teams can sort of deal with those regulations. Uh, but in general, my overall thoughts of the car are very very positive. I think the only thing that maybe sticks out to me is maybe being not quite as aesthetic. Uh, these sort of winglets over the front wheels, but I can think I at the same time I'll probably grow to enjoy them and uh, almost a bit like the halo, grow to accept it. So at the end of the day, and obviously of course the the wheel covers, but I'm sure teams will be able to change that. So <laughs> yeah, as long as we don't get those ugly things, that's fine. Um, but yeah, the whole point of this car basically is to move this dirty air. And in fact, what I didn't quite realise up until seeing the F1 videos is that dirty air is still there, but it's basically the way they're angling it, which is very very clever. Uh, rather than being directed straight at the car behind, they're angling it more upwards. So things like the front wing <clears throat> of the cars behind will be in that clean air, which is uh, obviously going to be fantastic for the racing. And hopefully if the numbers in the CFD and the wind tunnel uh, data is correct, we'll see that same level of great racing on track. So fingers crossed that's what we can get. Uh, I think <laughs> races like Mexico have pr sort of proven that, yeah, these regulations can't come soon enough, so it's going to be very, very interesting and very exciting to see these cars on track in a few years' time. Now, I just want to finish them with a few extra sort of regulation changes that they've made. One of the most interesting ones, I think, is the way they've changed the race format. It's not quite as drastic as we might have thought it would be, uh, but it is still very, very interesting. Uh, so the whole driver's press conference, which is usually held on the Thursday, has now been moved to Friday. Uh, so a lot of the driver's sort of activities have sort of been put now from Friday to Sunday rather than Thursday to Sunday, which basically helps alleviate the stress and the um, and, and just the toll on them as, as well. Um, but the big, big thing is practice sessions. So all teams uh, have now got to run at least two, uh, well, in, in two sessions over the course of the season, have to run junior drivers. Uh, in say a, in two practice sessions. So let's say um, 
for example, with uh, Latifi and Williams this year. So Williams would have to run Latifi uh, in two practice sessions over the course of the year. Otherwise, they get a fine from the, NF- from the FIA for breaching the regulations. So I love that. Obviously, teams like Williams and the and, and maybe Haas and sometimes as well, Force India, do do that occasionally. But I don't think, I can't remember the last time uh, a team like Red Bull or Ferrari or Mercedes have put a junior driver in. In fact, I don't think Mercedes ever have um, deviated from their two main drivers in the practice session before. So it's uh, it's, it's it's very exciting to see. It's, it's going to be good. It's going to give the new guys a bit of a shot uh, at Formula 1, give them a, get a bit more pra- practice time and, and, and race time as well. So, yeah, that's that's going to be really exciting to see. Now, the last thing I obviously want to talk about is the, is the cost gap. And that's something that we've pretty much known for a while. Um, but they now F1 have done a really good video basically outlining it. Um, and it, they've basically taken the salaries of the top three um, personnel and the drivers, and they've moved it out of that cost cap. So it's $175 million they can spend on actually developing the car. And this is it's, it's a brilliant way to introduce it. They're going to have an uh, independent um, advisor or uh, accountant that's going to come in and be checking all of these... Uh, all the, all the payments, all the all the transactions that are going on within the Formula One team, and they've also been, what's been great is they've been very very strict as well. They basically said if, if a team violates these rules or is found to be violating these rules, it'll be as simple as they'll get fined or they could even get kicked out of the championship for that season. So that is very 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 good and very, very nice to see that the FIA are taking a really strict and strict and strong approach to that. Um, so yeah, I'm all, I'm all for that. But those were just my thoughts. Then, so the main thing now is really to see what you guys think. Did you like these new regulations? Would you prefer if we stayed with the cars as they are? It's, I'm sure there'll be some people out there that don't like these designs. But let me know down in the comments below, and I'll try to reply to as many of you as I can. And yeah, uh, with that, then I will see you in the next one.